Welcome everyone. In this video, we'll apply the method of moments to derive general formulas for the estimators of parameters for a population which has a continuous uniform distribution. And first, let's just remind ourselves that the method of moments uh, in general finds values of the population parameters such that the properties of the population, the mean, variance, skewness, properties such as, as those, are equal to the same corresponding properties of the sample. And so that can be implemented in a three-step process, which is outlined here, where um, after we've picked a sample, in this case, of n different values, x1, x2, up to xn, we first calculate the sample moments, um, m1, m2, up to mk, then we calculate, we find formulas for the theoretical moments that we denote mu1, mu2, all the way up to mu k. Um, and these are the expected value of x, x squared, x to the k. And once we've calculated our sample moments and we've found formulas for the theoretical moments, then we can solve for the unknown parameters, theta1 up to theta k, by solving the corresponding um, system of equations that we get by setting each of the sample moments m1 to their corresponding theoretical moment mu1 and m2 set equal to mu2 and so on. And we're gonna set up as many equations as we have parameters in our model. So in our case, we're gonna be working with a uniform distribution, which is gonna have two parameters. So we're just gonna be working with the first and second sample and theoretical moments. Um, but I want to point out before we jump into that example that there is a link to this Colab notebook that you are looking at that I put in the description of this video. And if you click on the link over here, the open in Colab link, that's going to take you to the full section that we've been working on with method of moments. So here is just a, a snippet of that section. Okay, and before we take a look at the general case, um, as a reminder, in class, we went through question four, where we had a sample of four values that were picked from a continuous uniform distribution um, with unknown parameters alpha and beta. So alpha was denoting the minimum value, beta the maximum value um, for that continuous uniform distribution. And in class, and I'll put a link to a video that works through this example, we calculated the sample moments, we set them equal to the theoretical moments, and we solved for alpha and beta. And I just wanna refresh our memory that the values that we found were the method of moments estimate for the minimum value alpha was minus 0 0.797. And the method of moments estimate for the maximum value beta was 11.297. And we'll, generalize this process, and then we'll apply that general process to see that we can verify this specific result. Okay, so let's take a look at the general situation. Um, so now, rather than pick one concrete sample of four values, let's just imagine we have a sample x1, x2, all the way up to xn. So we pick n different values from a continuous uniform distribution with parameters alpha and beta, as we discussed before. Uh, and so now what I would like to do is find a general formula for the method of moments estimator for alpha and a general formula for the method of moments beta that we could apply for any sample that we pick from a continuous uniform distribution of any size. And so this is exactly what question 6A is asking us to do, which is find general formulas for the method of moments estimates of these two parameters. So the first step in this process would be to first calculate the first and second. So we're gonna need a system of two equations in here because our distribution, our population has two parameters, alpha and beta. So we find uh, the first sample moment that we denote M1. Typically, this would be a, a value that we could calculate, but now we're just going to say, in general, we're going to denote this first sample moment as M1 and the, first, uh, the second sample moment as M2. So these are just holding the place for values that, in general, we would calculate. Then we find formulas for the theoretical moments, which are the expected value. The first theoretical moment would be the expected value of x. 
And since we're working with a uniform, continuous uniform distribution, we have a formula for the expected value, namely it's alpha plus beta over Q. So now we've got um, one equation is the first sample moment M1 should equal alpha plus beta over two, the first theoretical moment. Um, then we set the second sample moment M2 equal to the second theoretical moment, which would be the expected value of X squared. And so recall that the variance of X, we can calculate by taking the expected value of X squared minus the expected value of X squared. And so rearranging that identity, we can calculate the second theoretical moment, the expected value of X squared by taking the variance of X and adding the expected value of X squared. And again, since X is a continuous uniform distribution, we have a shortcut that we can refer to for the variance of X, which is gonna be beta minus alpha. We square that quantity and divide by 12. And then we add to that the expected value of X squared. So that's where this alpha plus beta over two squared comes from. And now we would like to solve the system of two equations that I've written above for alpha and beta. And so notice from the first equation, we have M1 is equal to alpha plus beta over two. And that's gonna be a useful substitution that we can plug into the second equation. And we can also use that first equation to solve for alpha. Um, alpha is gonna equal two times the first sample moment minus beta. And so now I'm going to plug these two relations into the second equation, which is going to leave an equation for just beta alone that hopefully I can solve. So in place of alpha, I'm going to put uh, substitute two uh, times the first sample moment minus beta. And in place of alpha plus beta over two, I replace that with the first sample moment m1. And now we have a resulting equation, which just involves the parameter beta that we can next solve for beta. And so continuing um, this process, we could um, group together the two betas inside of this um, the squared uh, numerator, which is gonna give me two times beta minus two times the first sample moment. We square that quantity over 12, and what's left over is M2, and now I can subtract that M1 squared from both sides. So that's where the M1 squared comes from uh, on the right side. And now we can solve for beta. Um, for example, I can pull out the two and square it, which gives me a four that I use to, to cancel the off um, one of the fours, one of the factors in the denominator. Uh, and then finally, we could multiply both sides by three, uh, take the square root, and then add M1 to both sides. And this gives me a solution of the form beta is equal to M1 plus or minus the square root of three times the square root of M2 minus M1 squared, where M1 and M2 are the first and second sample moments. So I have a, a plus or minus here, and that's because uh, at some point in this process, I took the square root of both sides. Um, so beta should just be a unique value. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of just leave this on the side for now and um, just note that it's something we're gonna need to resolve. Next. We would want to similarly solve for the parameter alpha. And so I could take what I just found for beta and plug it in um, up top to this relation that we had between alpha and beta and solve for alpha, which is one way that we could do it. Um, I'm gonna apply a similar technique um, in order to solve for alpha. Namely, um, instead of taking this uh, identity, M1 is equal to alpha plus beta over two and solving that for alpha, uh, which is how we did that above. Here, we can take this same identity solve for beta, we can find that beta is equal to two times the first sample moment minus alpha. And now we can plug that into the second equation that we had for M2. So that gives me now a two M minus one minus alpha in place of the beta in the numerator. 
And again, we can replace the alpha plus beta over two with the first sample moment M1. And now I've got an equation which just has the parameter alpha in it and the algebra to solve for alpha works exactly the same way. We kind of group our alpha on one side uh, and I can subtract the first sample moment squared from both sides. And that gives me uh, the equation that we have over here. Um, and now if I factor out a minus two and square it, that gives me on the left side, I'm gonna have alpha minus the first sample moment squared over three. And on the right side, I've got the second sample moment minus the first sample moment squared. And now I solve for alpha and I get the same exact um, solution that I had for beta. And so now note that alpha is, the, is denoting the minimum value, beta is denoting the maximum value. Uh, so beta is larger than alpha. So I pick the negative one for the method of moments estimate for alpha and I pick the, uh, the plus for the method of moments estimate for beta. Um, and now any sample that I pick, I can calculate the first sample moment, the second sample moment, and then use those values directly to calculate the estimators for alpha and beta, uh, rather than go through the process such as what we did in question four above over and over and over again, now we have a nice general formula that we could apply for any sample that we pick from a continuous uniform distribution. So let's do exactly that. Let's apply this result that we just found to the sample that we picked in um, question four, and let's verify the solution we found to question four earlier. Uh, and so that's what is worked out in question six B. So I've got this code cell over here. Let me just explain what's going on um, in this code cell. So here was the sample of four values that uh, were picked for question four. So the first value was one, the second value was three, the third value was seven, and the fourth value in our sample was 10. And what the formula that we just derived in 6a tells us is that if I can calculate the first and second sample moments, then I can just plug them into these formulas in green above to calculate the method of moment estimates for alpha and beta. So uh, over here, we calculate the first sample moment. We sum up all of the values in our sample X uniform, and we divide it by the number of uh, the size of our sample, which in this case is four. Then we calculate the second sample moment by taking the sum of the values squared in our sample and then divide that by n. And now I plug these values into the formulas that we found for alpha and beta, the method of moment estimators. Namely for alpha, we took the first sample moment and then we had the subtraction of the square root of three times the square root of the second sample moment minus the first sample moment squared. And for beta, it was a very similar formula, but now we put the plus sign for the upper uh, cutoff of the uniform distribution. And I'm gonna run this code cell and let's check our results. So using the formulas that we derived in 6A with the sample that we picked for question four, these formulas are giving us the same exact estimates that we found in question four, so that's good. That means our work in question six and our work in question four is consistent. And once we've found our estimates for alpha and beta, I think a very reasonable question to ask is how good are these estimates? And without knowing what the actual values for alpha and beta are, the unfortunately the answer is we really have no idea how, how good these estimates are, um, but we can consider the following. We can consider what happens when I pick another sample and I apply the same estimate for the parameters alpha and beta based on a different sample, and I can repeat that again, let me pick another random sample, apply the same estimates for alpha and beta, and do this over and over and over again, and then we can take a look at the distribution of these estimates. 
And we can ask ourselves, on average, does it seem like the estimates are equal to the actual value of the parameter? So in other words, we can be thinking about sometimes the estimates are going to be too low, sometimes the estimates are going to be too high, but overall, if we average these out, are they accurate? And this is something that we could call bias when we're talking about the, the accuracy. And we can also ask, well, each time I pick a different sample, how much variability are we getting in these estimates? Are we getting values that are pretty similar to each other every time, or are these estimates changing drastically each time I pick a different sample? And that's getting at this issue of precision. So on your quiz, you're gonna investigate these ideas. Uh, and to motivate that investigation, let's set up a sampling distribution for these estimators. So um, there's nothing to do in this code cell down below. You can just run it. Um, and what this code cell is doing is it's generating um, 1,000 samples of size four that we're picking from a uniform distribution. And now you can see what the actual values of the parameters were. The minimum value alpha in reality is zero, and the maximum value beta in reality is 11. Um, but we're gonna pick a sample of size n, in this case, um, our n is four. So we're gonna pick a sample of size four, calculate the sample moments, use those sample moments to come up with the method of moment estimates for alpha and beta for that sample. And then we repeat this 1000 times over. And um, then we can take a look at the distribution of all of the different estimates that we get for alpha. And the actual value, um, the minimum value is zero. Um, the estimate that we got from the sample that we picked in question four was minus uh, 7.97. But now we can get a bigger sense of overall, what are the different estimators are, that we're getting and how much variability are there in these estimators? And this is a really huge variability here. Everything from like minus five up to eight, we're getting as the estimate for the minimum value. This is not very precise, but our sample size was only size four. It was pretty small. So that's why we have so much variability here. Um, similarly, looking at the distribution of estimates for beta, we have um, a sampling distribution here of the estimates for beta, and we can compare the actual upper um, limit for the distribution was 11, and we got something that was just slightly bigger than that. And again, here we can see that there's a whole lot of variability in these estimates because our sample is pretty small. So questions um, on the quiz are gonna build off of the ideas that we've discussed in this video.